Greetings, people of the internet. This is Scott with CircWorks, and uh, it's Friday. It's Fan Art Friday, and today I'm going to do one of probably a character from one of my favorite, personal favorite movies, The Iron Giant. And uh, yeah, I've been doing the sketch cards, so I thought I would actually take some time and instead of just doing kind of the sketch card portraits which are pretty straightforward and uh, take a little more time and actually do like a full a full piece you know full full body piece and everything and what better uh, subject matter than giant robots and so yeah, like I said, this is uh, Iron Giants, one of my one of my favorite cartoons, and you know, there's it's one of those that uh, when it came out, it didn't really perform very well at the box office. Um, it kind of took a little while before people started to discover it on, you know, DVD or. or I don't know if it was, I'm trying to remember how long ago that came out, if it was actually VHS. Might have been. Might have still been some VHS out there. I probably, yeah, because I think I do actually have a VHS copy of it. Or I had. I don't know if I still do or not. But, <laughs> um, but you know, there's certain things like that that, um, you know, that get discovered later on at least and uh there's there's a lot of things that i like that i didn't really discover until you know people started recommending it to me like um well fireflies one like that it was you know i was kind of late on the game on that and everyone was telling me how great it was so finally i checked it out and i had never i never really watched like buffy the vampire slayer or anything like that so you know i i've I heard about like Joss Whedon and everything like that, but just because I wasn't, not that I wasn't a fan, well, of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I just never watched it, it didn't, just from what I heard, it didn't seem to interest me too much, and and since then I've watched a couple episodes and I still, still didn't really get into it, but, um, but I did check out, uh, I did eventually got around to watching Firefly and loved that. But like I said, I was kind of kind of late late into that one. Um, another one like that was uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, which is probably one of my all-time favorite you know animated series. I mean, there's just the story and the characters and the story arcs of the characters. It's just so well done. Um, I mean, I could watch that series over and over, and, and you know, it just it seems like it gets better each time. But I had <laughs> previous to that, all I had seen was the uh, was the live action movie, which uh, I mean, I may have seen a couple couple episodes. I think I think when it when Avatar first came out, the 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 you know the animated series, The Last Airbender, Avatar: The Last Airbender, however you want to. Whatever how you want to classify it, um, I think my kids may have watched a few, so they were sort of familiar with it. Um, but uh, and I I probably watched watched you know a little bit of it, but I didn't really. It's one of those where you kind of have to invest in it and watch the whole thing because it's. I mean that's part of what makes it so great is just the story and how it unfolds and everything. Um, So, like I said, you know, I, my my only uh, exposure to it was the live action film, which I pretty much have the same opinion <laughs> as everyone else about that. It was just awful, <laughs> and uh, 
and I'm and to some degree I'm sort of an M Night Shyamalan apologist because I uh, at least you know Sixth Sense I thought was great, um, Unbreakable I thought was great, Signs I I like Signs a lot I think uh, there's some criticism about how the ending happens and yeah I mean I can understand but I'm willing to kind of forgive that because I I did like the movie and. Even the village, which I think was like marketed poorly. I mean, it was it was marketed as sort of a monster movie, which really wasn't what it was about. So I mean, I like that, and um, and then there's it's you know it's, I will admit that I think I think his movies kind of each one got you know I think he's, each one got a little bit <laughs> worse, and I don't want to say like. Be, like when you compare like Six Sense and and or Six Sense and Unbreakable, when I say worse, I mean I think Signs is probably or Six Sense is probably a better movie, but still, Unbreakable was really good. So I don't want to say like worse probably isn't the the word I'm looking for, um, but you know what I mean. So, um, but yeah, I mean even some of his other stuff. I mean there's. There's stuff in there I can kind of appreciate, but uh, yeah, that last Airbender was uh, not good. <laughs> but and I had seen it as a, uh, I'd seen it as a test screening. So, and at the time I really didn't know much about it other than I knew it was based on the cartoon and everything. And um. And if you're not familiar, a test screen is is where they screen movies before they actually release them. And then sometimes you'll have to. It's kind of a weird experience. I don't know if any of you guys have ever participated in that. But I got on a list like so. I would get tickets to these uh, these test screenings, and I've seen a quite a few kind of big blockbuster movies and some smaller movies that uh, you know months or sometimes even years before they come out came out like. Uh, I saw the, was it the, the G.I. Joe, not the first one, but the second one with The Rock, which wasn't, you know, it was a lot, I hated the first one, absolutely hate anything, it, pretty much anything that Scott Somers makes I've hated, so as a director I just think his <laughs> movies are horrible, but that's me, so if, he, if you're a fan of like The Mummy and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, different tastes I guess, but. I just don't like his movies at all, but, uh, but I kind of like the second G.I. Joe. It, it was definitely a lot better than the first, which, and maybe that's why, because I was comparing it to the first, but, um, and when you go, you don't know what movie you're going to see. It's all secretive, so they don't tell you, so you have a little bit of an idea, like you can usually tell, like that when you sign the the release form or whatever, the non-disclosure that you won't talk about the movie or anything like that. Um, it says, you know, the fine print, it says who the movie studio is. So if you know, like, what studios are behind certain movies and stuff, sometimes you can make an educated guess as to what you're possibly about to see. And then, you know, usually because you're waiting in, like, a line for, like, a couple of hours. Um, just because it's, like, first come, first serve. If you want to see it, you got to wait in line. Um, but, so, usually people, <laughs> people are trying to figure out what movie we're about to see in the line and stuff. Oh, I think it's this or that or whatever. Um, but usually you're seeing them a good three months before they come out in the theaters. But the that G.I. Joe one, that was... Uh, they had some... I guess they had some issues with it or something. It took a long time for it to come out. So I think I, think I saw that movie probably a year before it was actually released in the theater. And I haven't seen the, because when you watch them a lot of times, especially when they're heavy special effects movies, they're not always complete. So, like, they kind of give a little disclaimer and they say, you know, this movie isn't, uh, this movie isn't totally finished yet. So, you know, keep that in mind. And especially when you're giving your feedback and everything that, you know, some of the, some of the animation is very, you know, early stage and things like that. And. Sometimes it's a little jarring because you're watching a scene and then all of a sudden you'll see these animatics pop up. But, um, and some of them are real. Like if you've seen the, if you have seen that G.I. Joe movie, there's this awesome scene where 
Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes are fighting on this, like, icy, you know, cliff or whatever. It's it's pretty amazing. And then some of it was finished and some of it wasn't. So you'd it'd flip over to, like, this real quick and, like, kind of rough, dirty uh, animatic of them fighting and, like, little animated, you know, <laughs> puppet guys and stuff. So, um, but anyway, what was I saying? <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, what was I taught? I know I was talking. I don't know what my point was. <laughs> What's wrong with these videos? You know, I get on these when you're just kind of free form, just talking and stuff. I kind of forget where I'm going, but but anyway, so yeah, I saw uh, this was the um uh, test screening for. Uh, G.I. Joe, is it called Retaliation? Or is that, or is that something else? I don't know. Um, there's been so many different G.I. Joe series. I'm trying to remember what they were all called. So, you know, I, eventually I'm working my way back to <laughs> talking about Last Airbender. Um, well, I guess I could go into that. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit more about some of these other test screenings and things. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is kind of weird, though, when you go, because they, obviously they're, they're very worried about pirating, so you can't have a cell phone with you or anything like that. And, and it's weird because people just don't listen. Like, you, you have to wait in line. You can't really get out of line. And there's people that have their phones in their hands. I'm like, what are you doing? Didn't you listen to anything? And then, you know, then they don't have anything. That they can't, they can't get out of line. They can't run and put their phones away. So it's like, they don't really hold your phones for you. So it's like, sometimes they have to just leave. So it's like, I don't know, but. So I went and saw, you know, went to one of these and it ended up being the, the, the last airbender um and yeah it was just like it was like horrible and the girl i was dating at the time i took we we went together and i guess her she had a younger son who loved the 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 cartoon the you know the animated series and again i hadn't seen it at the time i loved it too but i hadn't seen it i wasn't familiar with it so I guess she kind of liked the movie, and I, I don't, this girl really, I don't think she had the best taste in movies, <laughs> but it was funny, because at the end, they give you, like, a little questionnaire for feedback, and I gave, you know, I gave mine, and obviously, I was just like, you know, this pretty much is just crap, I mean, it's, they ask you what you feel about the different actors, how they did, and, like, most of them were just horrible, and which scenes didn't work or all this stuff and you write this stuff down so which is weird because you think the reason why you're doing that is so you can so they can tweak the movie or change or you know fi fix whatever's wrong with it i mean why else would they be asking for feedback before they release the movie but <laughs> so they looked at my feedback and I guess, you know, after that, they have some additional questions they want to ask. So, I don't think they were concerned with, with anyone that had anything negative or... I mean, I wouldn't say that my feedback was constructive, because really the movie was just so beyond repair. So maybe that was the point. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, they basic So they told me... I had to... Basically, I had to go out and sit in the lobby, so... <laughs> after they read my thing and, and the girl I was dating she uh, she stayed in and answered some additional questions because I guess they wanted to hear only from the people that actually liked it so so it was probably a very uh, <laughs> a, a very limited amount of people in there um, and if, if you're one of the very few people that actually liked it um, yeah I I apologize, but yeah, I think you're definitely in the minority. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was funny that they they didn't have any <laughs> any interest in hearing from anyone that that uh, didn't really like the movie. 
And, you know, and these are kind of a big thing because this is when you watch these, I mean, this isn't something that they show in a bunch of different cities or whatever like that. I mean, these things, you're the you're basically the first like public audience that are seeing these movies. So it's kind of a big deal. They usually have all the directors like, you know, M. Night was there and I also saw the first Transformers and what's his name, uh, Michael Bay was there. And then sometimes, every once in a while, some of the stars will be there too. Um, so it's it's kind of cool. I haven't I haven't got invited to any recently. I I'm guessing because it's uh, it's a uh, <laughs> I probably I probably age myself out of the demographic that they want. So because they're you know they're really interested up until you know forty or so, and then after that you're not really their key demographic. So maybe that's why I haven't been invited back, but. I mean, certain movies, it depends kind of what the movies are, but like usually the big ones, the big action ones, they, you know, they're looking, uh, you know, they make probably more money off of like 20 somethings, 30 somethings. So once you've kind of got beyond that, you probably <laughs> you have less chance of getting invited to these things. So maybe that's why I haven't went to one in a while. Um, but what else did I see? Um, as part of those, you know, like I said, I saw saw the first Transformers. Um, I'm trying to remember, I, I saw some some decent ones, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember all of them. But, uh, so, like, back to, I guess, my original point was um, just kind of discovering these uh, these things either late, late after everyone kind of recommends them, if they're not as popular, or, um, you know, things that people just, just discover later on. It's kind of like, it just for whatever reason it didn't perform very well when it first came out and uh, Iron Giant was one of those that was kind of like that but and you always kind of I think I think most people take pride in discovering something early on and then trying you know kind of introducing other people to it and it's it's kind of like that old thing about like music where I knew about that band before they even came out or whatever, or before they became famous and stuff like that. And, but for me, Iron Giant was kind of like one of those movies. I had seen it like, you know, pretty much the first, when it first came out, I, I went, when I went to the showing, they actually, I got, I still have somewhere I've got the little, they gave out a little comic book adaption, which is cool. Cause they don't, they don't do that kind of stuff that much anymore. So I got that and went and bought the toy, which I've been using for reference. I still have it. His arm is broken, but I have his arm somewhere. And I've got all the little pieces, too. So, um, But, yeah, I, was just, I just thought it was so great. And I'm like, why, why hasn't anyone heard of this movie? And, you know, so you try to let people know about it. And eventually, you know, it found its audience. And it's it's very well regarded now so it's kind of it's kind of nice when you you know when you're kind of an early adopter to some of those you know type types of things movies or music or whatever but um, you know I mean giant robots and everything how can you go wrong and just this the story was so great and like you know, since then, you know, Brad Bird, who directed Iron Giant, has gone to do, you know, just some amazing stuff. You know, The Incredibles, and um, but now he's doing more live actions. I, I know they're talking about, they're, I think it's probably in pre-production or something, but an Incredibles sequel. And I don't know if he's at the helm of that or not, because I know he's been working on Tomorrowland, which looks really cool. 
would like to see him go back to doing some more animation though he did oh and that, that was another one uh <laughs> another uh speaking of those uh test screenings um the mission impossible the latest one that i think mission impossible 4 ghost protocol uh brad bird directed that and i also saw that one as at a uh at a test screening they must have uh I've seen a lot of Tom Cruise movies as part of those. I saw the one that was called uh, Jack Reacher, which when I saw it as the test screen, it was called One Shot. But I guess they did change that because it probably didn't go over that well. <laughs> so they changed the name of that one. But um, And that one I kind of liked. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I wasn't familiar with like the books or anything. I guess it's based on a, you know... A series of novels and everything. Um, but, but yeah, so I saw the Ghost Protocol, the Mission Impossible, and I was never really a big fan of the Mission Impossible movies. I just kind of, I always thought Mission Impossible was more of a team and it seemed like they just change it to oh it's just no it's just Tom Cruise he's he does everything he's the James Bond there's no there's no real team <laughs> you know it's not a team anymore so and I didn't like that at all I just I really you know Tom Cruise you can kind of I can kind of take or leave but I just don't like you know it's like it seems like so much of his stuff especially early on it was just like it was kind of the same thing it was like I'm the hotshot guy that's better than anyone else at this particular thing, and that's the way it is, and this is the story. And that goes for whether you're the best race car driver in uh, Days of Thunder, or the best fighter pilot in Top Gun, or you're the best pool hustler in Color of Money, or you're the best bartender in Cocktail. I mean, it was like always, it was like the same thing almost. So I don't know. I just kind of, but you know, he's uh, he's been in some some movies that I like and stuff too. So, um, most recently that, uh, day after tomorrow, that is, that's an awesome sci-fi movie. If you haven't seen that. And if you're, even if you're like, uh, we're, you know, not a Tom Cruise fan at all. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, it's just an excellent sci-fi movie and it didn't, that's another one that didn't do very well just cause I think, I think it had something to do with the, uh, the previous movie put out Oblivion. I think people thought, oh, this is just more of the same, but, and it's, you know, probably a lot of it, I think, came down to, again, the marketing and everything. But uh, if you have, have a chance to see that, if you're a sci fi fan, it's really uh, very underrated. It's really a good movie. So, but, but yeah, I like Ghost Protocol, and that was, I think, Brad Bird's first live action thing, and I think he, did a real good job with that. So now he's doing like Tomorrowland and he does make some good movies. So almost, almost smudged that, but I caught myself. Now I'm kind of getting into where these are, his hands kind of roughed out. I tend to pencil everything very rough, so I try to find my way in the inks, and sometimes, sometimes I have to be careful because if there's a, just if I rework things a lot, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I think I'm gonna try a different blue pencil. I tabled next to a guy who had who showed me this pencil that he used, and I'm. I forgot exactly what it was, but I'm going to see if I can find it and uh, and test it out. Because I kind of tested it out at my table when he showed it to me. And I really liked it. So and it's more like a mechanical one rather than what I use, which is a, a drafting pencil like this. Or can you see that? Here, there. And then you need, a, you need like a special sharpener for it and everything. And it's kind of a hassle. So... Um, Curious if the mechanical pencil, how those work, how I like them. In the past, it seems like they're always so, like, those mechanical pencils are so thin that they just 
break real easy. So I don't know, but I'm going to look into that. So I got, I don't know if you guys can see, so Hogarth is sitting here in his hand. We'll get to him in a minute. So I don't know how long this particular episode is going to be because, you know, obviously these take a lot more time than, uh, than the, just the real, the port, like little portrait sketch cards. So, so it's possible if we start running a little long, I might just cut it and then come back to it like in some of the final stages. I've still, you know, eventually, I just, again, I've, if you've been following me, you know, I've been busy and that's why I haven't really had a chance to do much of the things I want to do, my comic in particular. Um, but, you know, I do want, I do eventually want to just try to just draw some of these and then do a voiceover, you know, speed it up a little bit. Um, I just don't, I don't want to, you know, it just, it, it kind of takes some time to do that. And I don't want to, I don't want to do just the, just the sped up version without any kind of narration. I just don't like those videos because I usually watch videos while I'm drawing. So, you know, which may not be the case with everyone because there's some people on the internet that that's all they do is these time-lapse drawing where they just set it to music and they've got tons and tons of views and, I'm like, who has the time to, like, watch that stuff? I don't know. So, but, but I like the ones where they, they kind of pre-film it and then they speed it up a little bit and talk about it because then you can kind of see the process and it's not, it doesn't take up so much of your time and you're getting to hear, you know, hear something you know, while you're watching or listening, if you're drawing while you're watching or whatever. Yeah, this guy's tiny. So let me see. So we're about almost 30 minutes in. So I'll work a little more on this and then I might kind of cut back and then come back on so we don't, so you can see the, the finished piece. I don't know if I want to put any details as far as his like eyes and facial features in here if that's going to be too much at this size so I'm going to leave it off for now I might if I decide to come back in I don't know how well you guys can see that I'm not sure if the perspectives right he may be a little bit you know too small compared to the Iron Giant I know I know like here, I don't know if you can see, I've got some trees and stuff down here which are pretty small, which makes him look way bigger than I think he actually is because I think, you know, I think the movie there's probably, you know, he just kind of peeks over the treetops. He probably doesn't tower over them as much as this, but I took a little bit of artistic license, I think, with this one. So he may be a bit, bit bigger than he is in the actual movie. <laughs> Excuse me. And this is one that, you know, I'm doing it with a brush, but a lot of this stuff I could have probably done with like microns and things like that, especially in his eyes and stuff like that, or use my templates and stuff like that. But I don't know for, for these where I'm trying to, trying to draw it fairly quickly. Cause it's a, you know, I don't want to 
take too much time because I'm filming it and everything. And, you know, a lot of people have, you know, when these things go super long, they don't just don't have time, that kind of time, which I can totally understand. And that's probably why, you know, I, you know, I understand that, you know, if you watch videos of some of the, the guys that are just super successful, I mean, their videos aren't, you know, usually they're not as long as like mine are. And I think these, these are geared towards a particular, there's a particular audience that kind of likes these longer form videos, but it's really, it's probably not conducive to getting a huge audience and a lot of people watching them if they're super long. So that's why eventually I want to, I like to have a little bit of each, you know, some long form ones and then some, some quick ones. And, and so hopefully there's, something for most everyone so I think what I'm gonna do now just for the sake of time is I'm gonna shut the video off I'm gonna draw a little more and I'll kinda of come back cuz I mean I I think if you've seen what I'm doing here you kinda of get the gist of, of you know how it all works and then I'll come back and uh, start filling in some blacks and, and some other details and stuff once I kind of got the basic layout done so uh, for me I'll I'll be back in probably another I don't know 20 minutes or so for you it'll be instantaneous <laughs> and I'll have a lot more work done by then Okay, we're back. You can see I've uh, made a little more progress on this thing and uh, still got a little ways to go. I, I actually switched my inks because this ink that I've been talking about that I've been, you know, so excited about, the Deleter Black, um, it's like a manga ink which works real good for the Copics. I don't know, it seems like maybe it's not drying as quick or something, but it's I'm getting some smudging, which I don't like at all, so it's it's kind of weird. Maybe it's just because it's a bigger piece. Um, I, I don't know, so I, so I switched back to my uh, FW acrylic artist ink, and since this isn't going to be in color, or, you know, with the Copics, it doesn't really matter, but, yeah, it's like, I, I just guess I just can't find one ink that works great for everything, <laughs> you know? Kind of bummed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just kind of pop this guy out like I like to do with uh, some darker outlines. We'll add some blacks and stuff, but fortunately the this ink doesn't glide as as well. It's got a really good black to it doesn't quite glide as well as what I was using but anyway so what else is going on uh, so last weekend I went to a wedding um, for my friend a friend from high school I don't get a chance to see him very much but I, you know ever when we do reconnect it's always like you know it's kind of like one of those things like we you know, like we never, like we've always been hanging out and everything. So, um, so I was actually in the wedding party and everything. So that was cool. We, uh, so it was in Vegas and, uh, oh, he, he set it up pretty cool. He, you know, I think he handled pretty much the whole thing. I think he did all the arrangements and everything like that. And, uh, so the first night we went there, we went downtown to Fremont Street. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's kind of cool. It's got this big giant canopy that just goes all the way down, uh, the whole, like pretty much the whole downtown area is a few blocks and, uh, and they project like, uh, not like a laser light show, but like a video show on top. It's, or, you know, it's, it's really cool. And they've got like live bands and they got a lot of the, like the street uh, performers and stuff, which are always interesting. 
you know, guys dressed up as <coughs> celebrities or whatever, you know, costumes and stuff, looking for autographs and stuff like that. And then there's there's actually some artists there. There's uh, there's a guy that does. Uh, I didn't see him there this time. He we got there a little late, so he may have kind of closed up shop, but. He does these sculpture caricatures. Actually, there's a few guys. I, I think probably originally there was one guy, but I think he's got like an apprentice or something now or some other people that he's kind of showing how to do it. But he does these caricatures, but they're sculptures. So he does these faces and it, he starts off. It's just he's got these kind of ready sort of pre-made just basic faces without any real expressions that he kind of starts off with and then from there he kind of sculpts these out and he does them pretty quick but you know it's just it's kind of really amazing i think on one of my videos before when i was in vegas i kind of showed that guy working on some stuff so that's cool so we did that and then uh we we actually stayed at the stratosphere which is kind of like the it's got this huge tower that's I think it's the highest point in Vegas so and uh, you know there's a bar up there we we're hanging out the first night checking out you know just pretty cool view and everything that was cool and then uh, so after the wedding uh, my friend rented this this like party bus and you know it was all the bar was fully stocked and everything like that and um, we just went around to these uh, just different clubs and stuff and I'm not not really like a club person I don't I can't really dance or anything like that and but sometimes you got to you just do stuff for the experience and man some of these clubs man I just could not believe this first one we went to I mean just the, the way this club was designed and all the I mean just the money that you that's the one thing when you go to Vegas it's just the money that goes into these casinos it's just just incredible to look at and a lot of good ideas for like I should have took a lot of like reference photos because it's kind of like I do that sometimes when I go to Disneyland I'll take all these because there's so many cool things uh, that spark ideas especially when I do like my props and things like that I get a lot of inspiration from like Disneyland and stuff like that but Vegas it's got it's got so much you know just crazy you know design stuff in the hotels and everything but this club I don't even know how to describe it, it was like all kind of these just red lights and these big like glowing orbs and all these huge screen monitors and stuff and you know we weren't there for that long we would go from we went to like these three different clubs so but the first one was the most amazing and you know it's got a it goes off into a patio which was kind of was closed off but uh they had a pool up there and of course it's on a rooftop of one of these casinos it was like a casino i'd never heard of i'm trying to remember what it was called i think it was called the cromwell and the club was what was the club called i don't remember somebody's name um andreas or drea's i think or something like that yeah it was it was pretty cool just to you know experience and then well, then we went to another one uh that i mean this the second one we went to was just it was so packed. I, we just had to get out of there. It was just like couldn't even like breathe or anything. It was insane. Um, but uh, and then the third one we went to was uh, on the the roof of the or they have uh, this Paris motel. Which one thing about Vegas it's like a mini every. It's like a little microcosm of the real world because you got a little tiny host hotel that's uh, you know it's you know New York New York is all New York themed and the Paris theme and then there's the Venetian which is you know like Venice and um, you know they've all got their little themes so it's like my you know but they at the Paris they had this you know replica it's kind of designed to look like the Eiffel Tower so on the top of this there's a club and everything so it was kind of you know it's fun like I said it's not really necessarily my scene but it's it's something it's kind of cool just to, to experience and everything so so yeah I had a real good time it was it was fun you know lots of good food all oh, this Mexican we ate at the for the the after the wedding he rented out this uh, Mexican restaurant called El Segundo and it was oh man it was so good it like 
a big bowl of like guacamole at the table and everything like that. And that thing was gone so quick. It was good. But yeah, really good food. So I have to go. I'm trying to remember exactly where it was, but I have to go back, try to find that place because it was good. So yeah, that was fun. I got to kind of take a little break for the weekend, especially, you know, it's nice to do that, especially when you're as busy as I've been, you know, it's like I haven't had much time to do much. But now, you know, now I got to get back and I've got this comic book project that I've got to got to make some serious headway on. And once I once I get that, I'm hoping I'll I'll start it'll start being a little you know, I haven't really worked on my comic, Young and the Dead, lately, which I'm bummed about. But, you know, uh, if I can make some progress on this other comic book, if I can get it to a point where I'm more I'm comfortable that I'll actually, you know, finish it on time, then I definitely want to get back to um, working on my comic. But I might, I haven't done a, an update for the 100 days of making comics yet, and everyone is... Uh, it's cool because like Kevin restarted his. He's on doing his 100 Days of Making Comics Part Two, and there's a bunch of other people that are talking about doing it again. I don't know necessarily that I will do it again, but I I mean I'm, I I I kind of want to do the challenge. I definitely want to do the challenge again because I need to find time. I need to find that 30 minutes. I don't know if I can just. It just takes a long time to do the videos and stuff. But I do I do want to you know start get back to doing my like weekly updates on what I'm doing. But I may just do an update on the, the other comic I'm doing. The it's an educational comic, the one that um, that I was talking about, because it is comics. I mean, even though it's not my personal project, well, I guess that's kind of part of it, though. I think that's one of, sort of one of the stipulations that you find in 30 minutes to work on your personal project, which I haven't had time to do. So I don't know if that counts or not. But it is comics, so maybe I'll just do an update on what I'm doing as far as comics and uh, it'd be nice to sneak some time into my my own comic I really want to you know I just don't know if there's any possible way to get it done by uh, is it May or I think it's it's either May or June for the I think it's May for the Phoenix Comic Con because like I don't really have anything anything new to really bring I mean I've got a couple pieces that I didn't have last Phoenix Comic Con that I brought to the the Fan Fest, but I really don't have a lot of new stuff. I mean, a, a lot of the I'm still build kind of building that audience. So I mean, a lot of the people may not be looking for something new from me. They may have may just be discovering me. Hopefully, because you know that's kind of one of the goals. Is you want new people to. Um, discover your work so I mean I've got a bunch of stuff still but I don't have much new stuff so I gotta figure out how to rectify that so uh, let's see Right. So what else is going? So oh yeah, yes. Well, yesterday was my birthday. So, I, which I pretty much worked. I don't know if you can hear that plane. I live close to an air force base, so I, I don't know if that's coming out on the video or not. But my windows are closed. If I have them open, it's like <laughs> it gets kind of loud. But um, yeah, so I work most of the day, but. Uh, then in the evening, my girlfriend came over and uh, she made me dinner and everything, and that was that was cool. So, she uh, earlier she had asked me what I you know what I'd like to like her to make, and if you know me, then uh, and if or if you don't, I'll explain that I like all kinds of food. I mean, I like there's probably I could probably count on one hand the foods that I don't like. Um, so, I mean, I eat like all different kinds of, you know, styles of food or, you know, from different countries or whatever, or, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I'm not picky. I like all kinds of stuff. But so, so I was trying to think of something, you know, what's something I really like that I haven't had in a while that, uh, 
And I remember I had this this uh, dish called it's called beef Wellington, and I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's super good. It's like a <laughs> it's like a fillet, and it's um it's like baked in like a pastry with this kind of wine or mushroom sauce or whatever. And it's just and I, it's something that I just the first time I tried it, I was like, whoa, man, this is like heaven, and I just haven't had it forever, so. So that's, that's originally what I told her. And then she looked at the recipe online. It's like it was way complicated, <laughs> which <laughs> I think it kind of might be the case. So, yeah. So I think, and it's, it's, it's like one of those things where it's probably just easier to go out and order one somewhere and have somebody else prepare it. Cause it's like, there's a lot that goes into it. It takes a couple hours just to, you know, make it and all that stuff. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> So she suggested uh, fondue, which is really good, and that's kind of a fun thing. So, so yeah, it was cool. I I've got a couple of like the fondue pots or fondue sets and everything. I don't. It's not like I. A couple times in the past, I've attempted to do it and everything, but and it's usually you know sometimes it's just like a cheese or something like that, but because um, you can do. <laughs> you know, like a cheese that you can dip stuff in, or you can do like broth, and then you know you can cook like meat in it and stuff like that, and then also like a chocolate dessert fondue. But she had already planned to make. Um, eh, there's a little interruption there. Um, my camera cut off again because my phone was full. The memory. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> I've got like the thirty, the thirty-two gig um, iPhone, but and I, you know, I I don't have any music on it or anything. I took all. I don't know what's taking up all this space. I keep having to delete videos. I mean, I don't have. I usually do. <laughs> excuse me. Delete the videos as soon as I make them. So. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So I don't know. I don't know. I keep having to. Anytime I do a long one like this, it I I cuts it like like cuts it in half. So anyway, I can, so I had to basically what I had to do was upload them, upload the videos to my computer and delete them off the phone so I can finish filming this. So anyway, so <coughs> sorry. I was talking about. I guess I was talking about my birthday dinner um so yeah we did the fondue thing we just did like the cheese and uh the broth we didn't do the dessert one because my girlfriend i already decided to make uh tiramisu which came out came <laughs> came out really good she said it wasn't that difficult to make i would have thought that would be complicated but um so yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, so what do, what do we have, have to like dip and stuff? We had uh, like there are breads and stuff to dip in the cheese, some vegetables, um, like potatoes and broccoli. And um, then there were like little like pre-cooked sausages, like a little, I don't know, Hillshire Farms or whatever type sausages. Is it Hillshire Farms or Petrich Farms? I don't know. One of those farms that makes sausages, some, like smoked sausages, and then some chicken, and some steak, and what else? I don't know. It was good, and then they're like dipping sauces and stuff. So, yeah, it was cool. It was a fun, fun thing. My kids really liked it. I don't know if they've ever, if my kids had ever done fondue, so, and my boys, they helped, helped make it and everything, so, that was cool. Yeah. What else? I got uh, <laughs> I got some gifts. I got this. <laughs> I got. I had this garbage can, and it's uh, it's like the kitchen garbage can, and the lid has like just been totally like torn apart. Like a lot of it's because my dog. My dog keeps getting into it. Like. But I kept saying I was going to try to fix it, like build a, build a new. Because those garbage cans, 
it's like one of those metal ones. Those garbage cans are kind of expensive. Um, but I kept saying I was going to fi fix the lid, like make a new lid for it or something. And I never got around to it, so I think my girlfriend was <laughs> tired of me saying that. So she went and bought me a new garbage can, which I think one of her friends said, I hope, I hope, uh, hope no one gives me a garbage can for my birthday. And she, she's like, oh, no, he's going to love this. And they brought it, like, they, <laughs> they brought it over. And, you know, of course, it's just in this big bag, and you can kind of tell what it was. And I'm like, oh, I know what this is. And so yeah, my dog's not gonna be too happy because before he could get in the garbage <laughs> and now he can't. <laughs> but I just got so tired of yeah, I mean, every day I come home and I have to clean all the garbage and stuff that he got in, into because it, it's to the point where he just like that other one, he just knocks the lid right off and this one like actually like locks and everything so he can't get into it. So, so good for me, bad for my dog. <laughs> And then I got, uh, you know, I got some gift cards and stuff, which I want to get some, I usually never like, it seems like I never really buy myself stuff unless it's like art supplies and things like that. But I don't know. I might want to get some like comics and stuff. Like, so if anyone has some recommends on some good comics, probably not like, not necessarily like, like superhero Marvel DC type stuff, but like, uh, I don't know. There's some books that have been recommended in the past that I just haven't picked up, so I might want to use that and get me some stuff to read. I got, uh, my girlfriend gave me um, the Snowpiercer graphic novels, which is like a French graphic novel. I don't know if you guys have seen the film. It's a really good movie. Um, I think it's on Netflix for free now. I saw it in the theater because I just, I was hearing how great it was and everything. And, uh. But I guess it was based on a French graphic novel, and I got two volumes of that, and it's it's really cool looking. I I mean I didn't I knew it was based on the based on the graphic novel, but I it wasn't like anything that I asked for or anything or I was thinking of. But it looks pretty cool. They're like hardbound, and they've been you know translated to English and everything, and the artwork looks pretty good, but. There's like two different volumes and they look like they're two different artists. And they had two different names and like on the on the uh excuse me, on the uh on the covers, but I guess it's two different writers. The artist is the same, but the between the two of them they look like they look like different artists. The guy kind of I guess must have went a totally different uh direction. I mean, it's it's similar, but it's just like just the way it's executed and everything looks kind of different, which I thought was unusual. But so so right now we're just adding gonna add in some blacks and stuff here. So I don't know I don't know how long this this uh, video is gonna be. I. It's, it might be over an hour now because that thing, when it cut off, I don't know how long I was going, so. Um, I may do the same thing I did before where I just come back and show you the finished piece. I'm getting close, you know, but I tend not to like to have them get over too much over an hour. Um. I gotta get some more ink on my little bottle cap or whatever. It's running low there. So let's see. So speaking of inking and everything like that, um, I would assume most of you guys uh, are familiar with Peter Palmiotti. He's, you know, if you if you watch the 100 Days, he's a 100 Days of Making Comics alum, um, real big in the art community. He's uh, he's kind of being 
somewhat forced to move out of his apartment and everything. Um, and uh, But he's looking at a house he wants to get. And um, so a lot of people are doing, um, he's got kind of a, a GoFundMe page that you can contribute to. And I'll, I'll have to leave that in the, uh, in the show notes or show notes, whatever you call them, the comment sections. Um, but some people are doing artwork. So I don't the, like this fan art stuff I do. I usually don't, um, I usually don't really like try to sell it <laughs> just because it's fan art. I kind of just do this stuff for some, for fun. But I thought that I would um, try to sell this particular piece or if you've seen some other fan art stuff on my website. I mean, not my website because I don't really have fan art on there, but um, on other, other Fan Art Friday videos. Um, I thought that I might, uh, like, I don't know, I can auction it off or... Um, or just sell like this particular piece. Like if you're an Iron Giant fan and you 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 like this piece here, if uh, if you're interested in owning it, um, we could do a little uh, you know just have the proceeds go to to help uh, Peter um, go towards his uh, down payment on this house because um, he's he's got like. He's got cats, I guess, they're cracking down at the, the apartment and everything, and it's hard for him to find a home for the cats and all that stuff, and, and so he's kind of looking at this other house, but, I mean, all that's, that, there's probably all that information on the GoFundMe page you can check out, which you can donate, but, you know, maybe you, you know, maybe it's more enticing to actually get a piece of artwork, so if you're interested in that, um, you can get this piece, um, I would say, you know, at least at least twenty five dollars. I mean, it's a it's a full like I don't know eight and a half by eleven, a little bigger than eight and a half by eleven, um, you know, piece inked original artwork. Um, so, you know, if you want to if you want to own this for I don't twenty five dollars or more, uh, contact me and. Uh, if you're in the U.S., I'll ship it out to you for free. Um, if you're not, then I'll, you know, we can figure something out. But, but it, you know, it's for a good cause and everything. And really, Peter's done so much for just these this artist community. He's always sharing people's, you know, posts and promoting them. And he's got a lot of followers and stuff. So it's, you know, he's always helping people network and things like that. So I think. Uh, I think it would be a nice thing to kind of give back to, to him for all the stuff that he's done for me and I assume most of us if we're, you know, artists and everything. So, so um, yeah, just, uh, you know, you can email me at, uh, well, just you can either contact me through the YouTube page or email me at scott at circworks.com and uh, we'll see if we can get you this piece or if you saw any of those sketch cards or anything. Um, like I said, we can figure something out. Um, but yeah, it's it's for a good cause. So, and there's some other people that I think are donating pieces. I think uh, Jeff Lafferty has a piece that he's 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 gonna auction off, and um, Jay Ferguson was talking about having a piece. And man, if you can, I mean. I think his stuff can pull in some some decent money that might help Peter out because his his work is just incredible. Well, Jeff says too, so I mean they're both, uh, you know, obviously, you know, way better than <laughs> what I can do. But I, I I think this is a you know, I mean I wouldn't mind having an original Iron Giant piece. So I'm sure there's other people out there as well, and uh, yeah, there might. Let's see, there's. I guess I can finish up a little more on this. Um, did I give out my email? Yeah, so if you, I think I did, but in case I didn't, uh, it's just Scott at CircWorks. It's S E R K A W O R K S. You can email me about this piece or any, you know, any of the, uh, most of those sketch cards I still have. I've sold a few. Some people have contacted me. Like I said, I don't really. 
make it a point to try to sell this the fan art stuff but but I'll take it to shows and sometimes people will, will buy pieces or just contact me and say oh I really like that piece um, so so all that stuff you know there's this or any other stuff like that that you you might like to own and we can get help Peter out a little bit I'm sure he would appreciate it so think about it and uh, you know let me know uh, but besides that I guess that's uh, I'm gonna do a little so there's a little more blacks I gotta fill in here but I'll show you the piece at the very end and uh, so the next time you see me this thing will be should be done all right so this is uh, I don't know if I can fit the whole thing it's kind of a big I lifted my camera up some but um, I still don't know if I can fit the whole thing I can do it sideways you can see that now just everyone flip your monitors and that will be right set up no big whoop all right so anyway <laughs> So one last thing to do, I've got to sign my name. Let's see. Almost put 14 on there. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Iron Giant, and like I said before, um, if you would like to own this piece, it is for sale, and the proceeds go to help out Peter. And uh, and so, yeah, just please let me know, and uh, we'll figure something out. But, uh, yeah, a minimum of $25 if you want to pay more. Uh, that's just more money to help Peter out. So um, let me know. And uh, so until next Friday, yeah, this has been a fun one. I, I got a chance to take a little more time with, with something. And when I take time drawing stuff, it's always good if it's giant robots. So thanks for following. Thanks for liking. Thanks for commenting if you're going to comment. And, uh, and yeah, so until next week, and hopefully, I don't know, we'll see. Hopefully, I'll be able to do a little update on my 100 Days of Making Comics, uh, Beyond 100s, and all that stuff. Because lately, all I've been doing is the fan art videos. It's just time is a factor. But um, but I'm going to see what, what I can do to, to squeeze some other stuff in and everything. So... Iron Giant for sale goes to Peter Palmiotti's uh, down payment on his house fund and all that kind of stuff. And uh, help a brother out, man. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. That is all.